Hi, I'm Maria Saracino. I'm working from my kitchen today. I'm bringing you a super easy polymer clay 101 tutorial. Today we're going to be making this little cute pendant and this little ring bowl. And see, it's perfect to put your rings by your nightside table. Um, this is a super easy workshop. It's perfect timing for Mother's Day. Great project to do with your kids. So I hope you enjoy it and uh, have fun. All right, so we're going to start with our supply list. Things we need to start with the clay. So I'm using four colors of Sculpey. So I'm using uh, the Fuchsia Pearl, which is number uh, 1112. And you see it's a nice, pretty pearl color. I'm using the Dusty Rose, and Dusty Rose is number 303. I'm using the white, I got a little corner missing, but that's okay. This is a two ounce uh, package of the white which is 001 and for the black I tend to buy the black in one pound blocks but you can also get it in in the uh, two ounce block so this is a little two ounce piece uh, that I've cut for my big block and the number for black is 042 I'm also uh, using a little glass bowl from the dollar store and uh, I'm a big fan of the dollar store you can get whatever you need there uh, so this bowl, if you notice, it papers outward. So you want to make sure that you're not using an armature, a glass armature that kind of curves in because then you'll have trouble removing the clay bowl from this armature. So something that tapers just slightly outward is the best thing. And uh, this is just a small little bowl I got at the dollar store. I think they were sold in packages of three or four. You need some kind of roller. Uh, if you have a pasta machine like this, great. And if not, just some kind of roller. This is an acrylic roller from Sculpey. Uh, you can also use a PVC pipe, or you can even use your nonstick uh, rolling pin. I think you can get a Betty Crocker nonstick at the dollar store as well. Uh, just don't use a wooden one, especially if you're going to, you know, once you use something for clay, don't use it for food uh, because there's some little oils that might leach into, uh, into your tools. You also need some cookie cutters. So this is a little three by three inch square cookie cutter that I'm going to be using for the bowl. And these are some round ones that I'm going to be using for the pendant. Uh, this one here is about uh, two inches, two and a half inches. And then I have smaller sizes that I'm going to use to cut out the, uh, the hanging hole. You'll need some kind of knife. This is the Sculpey uh, knife and this is just to do some nice straight cuts. You might want an X-Acto knife just to do some like little detail cuts if you need it. And then I brought along a little tool just in case you want to do some fine tuning or if you want to put your initials in the bottom of the bowl. So those are the main tools. An option is to have a sealant that you can use to finish your pieces. If you want a satin finish or if you want a really glossy, um, brilliant, glass glaze on it this is the best one to use or the duraclear both of them are made by deco art they're both available at most craft stores and the same thing with the brushes i get these you can get these anywhere at an art store or even the dollar store just make sure that if you buy brushes at the dollar store that you get the kind that are acrylic uh, uh, hairs rather than those soft hairs they shed and you make a mess when you uh, when you go to glaze your stuff. These are great too because after you've finished using them, you can just throw them away. So that's it. That's the supplies that you need. And now we're going to get going on creating our projects. All right, so here we are. I'm rolling out the last of my colors here. So this is my block. I'm going to put that on the side for now. I've rolled out a sheet of white. I've rolled out a sheet of the fuchsia and I've rolled out a sheet of the dusty rose and you can see the thickness is about a couple of millimeters thick. It's on, if you're using a pasta machine, it's on your uh, thickest setting. And if you're using a rolling pin, kind of think that you're like you're making a, a pie. You're just rolling it out to that thickness. So to start with, we're going to make the base of our bowl. So we're going to use our cookie cutter and you're going to stay off to one side and you're going to cut, press down and cut your little square and you're going to put this on the side. 
This is the bottom of your bowl, and we're going to be building up on top of this. But for now, we don't. We're going to put that on the side, and we have this leftover um, black. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut. Take that excess off. We'll need that later, and we're just going to cut into little strips. We're going to cut little strips, just like that. And, you know, these are going to be funky bowls, so you know you don't have to be perfect. Um, if you have small children doing this, you can use little plastic knives, um, or you can use, uh, you know, you can help them out with this if you like. You can even use like a ravioli roller where you can kind of just roll and do the cuts. Anyways, let's, let's say we're going to cut about six stripes here. You need to get rid of your excess clay. Pull out your white and the same thing you're going to, you're going to start cutting some, do your first cut and discard that, put it on the side and let's do six white stripes as well. So these are going to be part of the design that we're doing. And once you start making these little bowls, you can experiment and do different combinations. And if you go on YouTube, you can find some other neat patterns. You can do a checkerboard if you want. So we're going to discard, not discard, but put the white on the side. We're going to go back to that. So we're going to start by layering the black and white. You're just going to butt them together so that there's a little bit of stick there and you're just going to alternate black and white so make sure that you butt them together so that they stick same thing just keep going until you have a nice black and white stripe pattern happening So I don't mind if it's not perfect because I find that uh, these bowls are kind of funky and and even the pendants, you know, they they don't need to be perfect. That kind of defeats the purpose of something that's handmade, I find. So this is a really easy, easy method of doing a stripe. All right, so there, I'm gonna make sure that everything is butted together very nicely. And I'm gonna take my square cutter again, and I'm going to more or less do another cut like that. But I'm gonna save this, these extra stripes because I might use these for the pendant. So just put those on the side for now. And you're gonna take this stripe, and with your knife, you're gonna do a diagonal cut. Apart a little bit, so just stick them back together. And put that on the side for the pendant later. Take your black piece from earlier and you're going to layer this on right in the corner. Make sure that everything kind of touches. Don't worry if it's a little bit short, it doesn't really matter because this gets all kind of rolled together and then it will probably end up uh, a little bit bigger, so we're gonna be cutting the excess. So there you are, that's your first slice. So now put this on the side, because we're gonna start doing our little uh, canes for the flowers. All right, so you have a little piece of white that you cut off of the end. You're gonna squish this all up and roll it into a nice ball. And then you're gonna roll it into a cylinder. Okay, we're not looking for perfection here. Then we are going to take our uh, dusty rose and same thing as before, we're going to cut our square. We're going to cut the diagonal. Let me put that in, in the big picture frame. You're going to cut the diagonal. And you're going to put half of this diagonal on your 
original square. I'm gonna make sure that everything butts nicely. Don't put too much pressure. You just want everything to make contact. Put it on the side again. So now you're gonna take your little piece of white You're going to cut from, from your dusty rose. You're going to cut about an inch, an inch and a half little section. And you're going to lay your white in the middle. You're going to cut off the ends to match the size of your white. And you're going to gently roll it. Don't worry if it's not perfect. You're going to roll it until the ends meet and then you're just going to gently smooth it out. So you have this little cylinder and there's a little white center to it. Now you're going to take your fuchsia and with the fuchsia we're going to cut about a same amount about an inch and a half inch strip from the end, put the, fish, the balance over there. And you're going to cut off the ends so that it lines up with what you've already got here. And then you're gonna just encase it all together and just have the ends meet. And then you're gonna roll it all together and smooth out those seams and just use your fingers to do that. Just roll it, roll it, roll it. So now you, you'll have a kind of a triple color caning there. So you're just going to cut off the end to give you a nice clean look. Do the same thing on the other side. So now you have a nice little sausage with a tricolor and this is just called the bullseye. All right, so you can use these little circles if you were to cut them and use them as little canes. You can just slice and you get all these little circles like this that you could use them as they are and just create like little bullseyes, bullseye patterns, which is cute. Or what you could do is create um, a bit of a, a heart shape to make like little petals. And to do that, you can use your tool or you can use the back of the knife. Let's use the back of the knife, not the blade, the back and just kind of press in a little bit and shape, shape this into a, a little bit of a heart. So I'm just using the back of my tool to kind of push in and then with your fingers, you're going to shape it into a bit of a heart. Point point the end and you have a little bit of a heart. These are kind of funky shapes. And now you're just going to slice. Don't make them too thick. So you want, you want these little slices to be about a millimeter or two thick. You see how, and if you need to, you can reshape each one of these little hearts, these petals. So I'm going to take my, my base that I've been working on and I'm going to start layering and placing my petals to create a flower. This is going to be a six petal little flower. So there you go. So that's that's my my basic design. I'm going to take a little of the black, the leftover black that I had from my original cut. I'm going to make a little ball, tiny little ball, and I'm going to put that smack in the middle. I also like to do a few little polka dots. I think it just adds to it and just like little, little round, tiny 
little balls and you just push, put a little bit of pressure to get them to stick to the dusty rose. So you just add some nice little, and do different sizes so that it's, it's a little bit interesting. small one right here all right so that's my basic design now we have to make sure that this all comes together so with my rolling pin and I'm going to be very very gentle with this I don't want to put too much pressure but I want to kind of flatten down uh, the raised flower a bit so I'm just going to put a little bit of pressure and I'm going to go in both directions horizontal and vertical And as I'm doing this, the whole thing is kind of sticking together and spreading out just a bit. You still want to keep that nice thickness. So this is a double thickness. You can see that right there. Now you're going to get your square cutter once more. And you're going to place it by this time. By rolling it out, you've kind of elongated it a little bit. So if you need a little bit more, just kind of... Go ahead and spread it out a little bit more. And then using your cutter, so you're going to find your position and you're going to cut down and remove all the excess. And there you have your pattern. So you'll notice that the cookie cutter has a little seam right here. So that creates a little indent in the cutter. So using your X-Acto knife, this is where you need to sometimes do a little bit of a cleanup, just to make it look nicer. Or just use your finger to smooth it. All right, so now we have the pattern done. So you're gonna take your little glass bowl. So you could either place your design on the inside for a smaller bowl, or you can use it on the outside for a larger bowl. So let's, let's say we're going to use the outside for this. So you're going to find the center. So that's about where the center is. You're going to turn it over and you're going to push all the air out from the center. And then slowly you're going to work your way curving around the bowl and as you're doing a little bit at a time, you're pushing all the air out. You don't want to have any little air bubbles caught in there because it just, it'll wreck your finished piece. You want it to look very finished and smooth. But you see how I'm working my, my way out, just putting pressure and working all the air out. If you turn it over, you would be able to see any air bubbles if they were trapped in there. But so I'm just slowly pushing it out pushing all the air out and making sure everything is sitting flat against the bowl. Once it's curved, say there is the inside of your bowl, you can see it underneath. Once you've done that, then you're going to finish these edges. And how I do that is I just gently soften those hard edges and kind of slope them downwards towards the glass. It gives you a nice rolled effect just softens the harsh cut edges. Gives it a more finished look. There you go. Now, this is the point where you can Put your initials in the bottom. I have a, a cute little stamp that I had made. And I'm going to put my name in the bottom. But you can also use your little tool and just put your initials in. So that's ready to go in the oven. So we'll just put that on the side. That's going to be very cute. So now we're going to do the pendant. So you're going to start with your block and what I want you to do, this is your back, the base. So I want you to roll this out again into a, into a, a 
piece that's about one eighth of an inch thick. And remember to go in both directions so that you end up with something that's quite even. There you go. And you're going to use your large cutter. Discard that. Right. Then I want to do a little bit of a stripe on this as well. So I'm going to take my, my leftover stripe and I'm going to uh, cut a kind of a half circle, a little bit more than half circle, and I'm going to layer this on top. top. Then I'm going to take my pink and I'm going to cut a piece of that off to just kind of match up right there. And since I'm going to be cutting a second hole in this, I'm going to just, I'm not going to, uh, to do a full flower. I'm actually just going to put a few petals. I'm going to do it as, as little hearts. And I think I'm going to do my second cut up here, so I'm just going to put a few little hearts. So I have this thing about odd numbers on something like this, so I, I'm going to do three. And you see I'm going to overlap it onto, onto the uh, black. There you go. So I'm just... And because I want this to have kind of three layers, because I want to... I want to do something a little different with this. I'm going to layer it on top of that fuchsia that I had lots of left over and I'm going to just roll everything kind of flat and smooth and kind of go in different directions here. And now I'm going to show you a neat trick. So this little trick for doing a pendant, I'm going to use uh, one layer of a plastic sandwich bag and I'm going to lay it over my design and I'm going to recut this pattern. By using the plastic bag, when you go to cut, it's going to force everything to dome, which gives it a really neat look on the pendant. So I'm going to push down. I've got to put a little bit more, more pressure on this. Take it off and you'll see how it's domed. The whole thing has domed. You can see that. And then I'll go back with my cutter and cut all the way through discard all of this and you're left with this nice domed effect. It's three layers thick and you're just going to smooth out all the rough edges so that you have a nice finished finished edge. And now I want to do a second hole which is going to be where I'm going to hang my necklace from. So I'm going to find the spot where I want, want that to happen. I'm going to find it right there and I'm going to just push in. So when I chose my spot, I wanted to make sure that I had at least a quarter of an inch at the top that I could uh, fish my, my string through. So there you go. This is the pendant that we made. Now, the more you do this, the more you can do other things like make little beads out of these little extras where you just roll them and, and then string a little hole through them or drill a hole through them. But you can also put the hole in you can make these interesting little beads if you wanted to. And you can just use like a skewer to poke a hole through it. But anyways, that's our pendant that matches our bowl. And the same thing at the back. If you want, you can put your initials. And, uh, and then these are ready to be baked now. So your pieces are now ready to be baked. I'm just sitting them in a very well weathered cookie sheet. And I'm going to bake these at 275 degrees uh, for a little longer than the, what is recommended on the package. So with, with Sculpey, it calls for 15 minutes for every half inch. I'm going to actually bake these for about half an hour. The longer you bake it, the harder the piece gets. And if you wanted to sand it or something, it's just a little bit harder. But I just find that it's, it's, uh, it's better to bake a little longer, especially if you're, you're going to be using Sculpey for something like a pendant jewelry or or for a low bowl. 
Anyways, these are going in the oven. I'll see you in about half an hour. All right, so half an hour has gone by through the magic of videography. We've skipped ahead. They've come out of the oven and you just need to pop it off. It should come off very easily off of the gloss. You can get rid of the bowl and here is the finished little bowl. Now you can leave it like this, but it's a little bit dull. So what I like to do is I like to give it a coat of, of varnish and um, I'm gonna do this one here. I made a second one, I made a little second bowl with some of the leftover. So I'm gonna do one in satin, the uh, satin finish and one in the brilliant gloss. So we'll do this one in the brilliant gloss, which is the uh, triple thick. And you'll see how it just kind of makes it just glisten. And you'll have to do one side and then once it's dry you can go and do the back side and don't forget to get those edges and then just put it aside and don't touch it and for the second one i'm using a matte clean brush and i'm going to use the dura clear the satin finish and let's see what the difference is Right now, when it's wet, it looks the same. We'll see if it makes any difference when it's dry. I'm going to make sure to do all the edges so that everything gets covered. When the first, the top layer is done, I'll go back and I'll do the bottom. Now, the pendant, I've already glazed it and I've already put the string on and I've used the brilliant gloss and it turned out really nice. I didn't gloss the back of it, but you can see it turned out quite nicely and I'll show you the finished product. I'll wear the finished product for you to see later. But we'll be back once these are dry. We'll do the second coat at the back and we'll take a look at how they look. So we're, here we have two little bowls and our pendant. This one is done with the triple thick brilliant gloss finish. This one is done with the satin finish. And here's a little pendant that you can put in your little bowl. And that's a nice little gift that you can give someone. Instead of the leather string, you could also use a chain. Uh, but have some fun with this, try different designs. Um, and this is a, a very easy uh, project to do with your kids for yourself. Give them away as gifts or keep them for yourself. Thanks very much and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.